Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is gonna be a fun one <laughs> because it's my birthday book haul. So if you're seeing this video on the day I post it, it's my birthday, officially my birthday. February 24th, 1994, I'll do the quick math for you, 28. I turned 28 today and I'm excited about it. 27 was pretty shit, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm excited about 28. I'm also, I don't know, I know that there's like this weird feeling about hitting your late 20s. For me, not ashamed of it, not afraid of it. Very stoked about this year, feeling a lot of clarity. I don't know, the last couple therapy sessions I've had were pretty righteous. So I just feel a little more clear headed, a little more focused. Um, and I'm excited for this year around the sun, <laughs> this trip around the sun, if you will. Anyway, so I love birthdays. That's first and foremost, but I especially love my own. And um, I, it doesn't need to be a huge day. I just really like to treat myself throughout the day or the week um, to like make myself feel pretty special. So like on my birthday every year, I order myself some donuts and I'm not talking Krispy Kreme cause that's like not my path in life. I'm saying like family owned local donut shops that come in the pink boxes. Favorite donut of all time, cake donut with rainbow sprinkles. Leave your favorite down below. They are one of my favorite things. So I like get myself some donuts every birthday and I usually make coffee at home, but on my birthday, I go buy coffee out in the world. And then um, this year I'm gonna buy myself some flowers. I feel like I've done that the last couple years, but it's just the little things. So I get the donuts, I get the coffee, I buy myself some flowers, and I always have ice cream cake. Every, every birthday I get ice cream cake since I was a child. Let me insert a photo here now. This is me at like two or three with my ice cream cake with a big bird on top. I'm all about the ice cream cake and I just love it. So this year I'm gonna do those things, right? I'm gonna get those donuts, I'm gonna get the coffee, I'm gonna do it. But I also like to buy myself a couple of things. Number one, bought myself some new shoes to work out in. Love that for me. And then I also have this heavy bag of books that I went out and bought today. So only one of these books was a book that I like went to the bookstore looking for. I knew one. <laughs> the rest are all just books that caught my eye or books that I didn't realize I was gonna find today. And I'm just really stoked. We've got a short story collection. We've got a mem memoir. We've got a romance that I didn't think was out until March 1st. Apparently not. Apparently it came out a week earlier than I thought it was. Um, so I've got a good stack. I've got a fantasy, a fantasy novel. So it's gonna be good. I'm really excited about it. And uh, let's just jump in. However, wait, hold on. First, I would like to ask what your ideal birthday is. Like what's your ideal birthday breakfast? What's your ideal birthday dessert? Do you even really like dessert? What's your birthday drink of choice? Let me know. I love birthdays and I also love to hear how we all love being celebrated in very different and small ways, right? So anyway, let me know down below and now let's get into the books. I'm just gonna pull the first book out, which is Graham Norton's Home Stretch. Uh, Graham Norton, the talk show host, I didn't realize was an author. This is his third book, so I'm far behind. <laughs> I'm really behind, did not realize that he wrote books. Apparently all of them take place in Ireland, which is pretty sick for March, right? Super stoked. Also, I don't think I've talked about this book in a video, but I also just picked up this a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, and it's this, I think it's gonna be great for St. Patrick's Day, March. Um, two old friends reconnect in Dublin for a dramatic revealing evening of drinking and storytelling in this winning novel. 
So anyway, that's not, I mean, now it's in the video, but this wasn't part of the haul. So I'm gonna just put her back to sleep now. There you go. Um, anyway, so I didn't know that Graham Norton was an author and found that out today. I was 28 years old <laughs> when I found out that he's an author. Um, but the, I mean, so first I just noticed his name because I watch Graham Norton clips religiously, <laughs> just like the same five clips over and over again. Um, and so when I saw his name, I was like, there's no way. And then turns out if there's a will, there's a way. Um, so anyway, here is the synopsis. It is 1987 and a small Irish community is preparing for a wedding. The day before the ceremony, a group of young friends, including the bride and groom, drives out to the beach. There is an accident. Three survive and three are killed. The lives of the families are shattered and the rifts between them are felt throughout the small town. Connor is one of the survivors, but staying among the angry and the mourning is almost as hard as living with the shame of having been the driver. He leaves the only place he knows for another life, taking his secrets with him. Sounds like he's gonna be living with some secrecy, some guilt, some regrets that are gonna haunt those left behind. Um, so definitely not what I expected from Graham Norton. I did read the synopsis before I bought it, um, but did you just hear my hip crack? <laughs> this is 28. Um, Anyway, uh, definitely not what I was expecting from this like comedic talk show host, but sounds excellent. And when I looked up the reviews, it has over a 4.0. So it got straight A's on the reading exam. So anyway, that's the first one. All right, next up, we've got a memoir, which I'm super excited about. I'm trying to read more memoirs and, and short story collections in 2022. And so I picked up Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford, which, I mean, I love that it's a memoir, but it sounds devastating. It sounds like there's violence and questions and mystery in her life and unwanted attention and um, abuse. And so it's definitely not gonna be an easy memoir, but I think it's going to be beautifully done. It was blurbed online by Roxane Gay. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. And um, I just think it's gonna be fantastic. And again, I'm trying to read more memoirs. It is a signed edition, so <laughs> I'm even more excited about it. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be wonderful. I'm hoping to read it very soon, and so I will let you know. But if you have read it, let me know what you thought. Because again, it sounds fantastic. All right, next up we have the fantasy of this book haul, which is actually my book club's March book pick. And it is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I mean, just take a gander. So can I be truthful for a second? I don't read much fantasy. Um, it's just not really my genre, but it is my book club book pick. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna step out of my comfort zone. I'm gonna read something in a genre I don't usually read from, but I'm pretty stoked about this one because I mean, number one, out of the comfort zone, genre wise, love that. But also I have seen this cover everywhere. <laughs> I have seen this book so many times. When I looked for it today, I was like, this is like recognizing someone out in the world and not knowing exactly how you know them, but you know them, right? That's how it was finding this book today. <laughs> so I'm nervous about this one just because again, it is a genre that I don't usually read, but I'm also, I think when you're like going into a new genre, you're almost overwhelmed because you're like, I'm not super familiar with this type of world building. Um, but I have high hopes for this. I feel like the conversation's gonna be great. I know Elias and Joel are super stoked for March's book pick. So I think it's gonna be fun and I can't wait to discuss it. And I hope I end up loving it. I think it's a series, right? I think it is. So if I end up liking it, I'll get the other two as well. But I had to have the physical copy I feel like since I don't often read fantasy, I was like, I want that physical chunky book to get shit done. <laughs> so yes. All right, next up. Hi, mental health is a real thing, my friends. And after being diagnosed with severe anxiety over the last year and just like really leaning into panic attacks, which 
definitely don't recommend. Not my favorite way to spend my evenings. But because of that, like because of this kind of shift in my mental health over the last year, I am very interested in stories, memoirs, novels that have something to do with anxiety. So I saw this cover and I was like, that's cool. And then I read more about it and I was like, anxiety, let's read it. Um, but that is, my mess is a bit of a life. And it looks like a little juice box. I love a bold cover. And not only is this orange and yellow striking, but it's also just like a juice box. What secrets lie within? But I think it's just um, like a memoir through short stories about anxiety. And they're pretty short little blurbs. Um, and I just, I am very invested in my mental health over the last year and continuing through the rest of my life. But I definitely wanted a book that kind of talked about anxiety. So that sounds great. All right, next up is the book that I knew I was going to buy today. I mean, if they had a copy, um, but that is Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. This is a book that is beloved by one of my fellow grad student friends. She loves this book. I think she's written papers on it, I believe. And I'm really excited for it because of how much my friend loves it. So it says, in 1949, four Chinese women recently, recent immigrants to San Francisco begin meeting to eat dim sum, play mahjong, and talk. United in shared unspeakable loss and hope, they call themselves the Joy Luck Club. With wit and sensitivity, Amy Tan's debut novel, now widely regarded as a modern classic, examines the sometimes painful, often tender, and always deep connection between these four women and their American-born daughters. So I love a family-based novel, but it sounds like it's gonna be a layered family novel, which sounds fantastic. And I can't wait to text my friend with updates on how I'm loving it. So there we go. Okay, we have my short story collection. I have seen this book around over the last like six months because of how cool the fish is on the front, or is it an eel? I guess you'll tell me in just a second. And that is if I had two wings, but, this already caught my eye. And then while I was walking around the bookstore, I looked up like best short story collections. Um, so this was already in my cart. And then when I looked that up, I saw this on there and I was like, excellent, it's coming home with me. Um, it's hard to describe a short story collection because of the fact that there's so many short stories in it. But I did read online that it does the Southern Gothic really well. That's at least what I read, that some of the stories are really eerie or kind of twisty in a really cool way. So I love this cover. Again, I've been really trying to read more short story collections this year. And so I'm hoping to read this one super soon, but there we go. All right, friends, two more. We've got two more. And these are actually, these are books that I've mentioned in a recent video. The first one is I'm So Not Over You. This is a romance that I'm so excited to get to. I mentioned it in my Cupid book tag of like books I was really excited to read in 2022. This book is basically about two exes who um, haven't spoken in a month. And then one of the exes reaches out to the other and says, hey, I basically need a date to a family dinner. Can you just pretend that we're still together? And that's what ends up happening, apparently. And so it's kind of like, these two exes that are in this situation where they're like acting like they're still together and I'm sure like the sparks are still gonna fly and it's just gonna be intriguing. So I just, I love a good like ex novel, ex romance. Um, there's always such good tension and like dialogue and like a big crescendo to them like finally ending up back together again. I hope that's what ends up in this one. I'm super excited about it. So there you go. All right, and then the final book I picked up <laughs> is a book that I didn't think came out until March 1st. Turns out it's out. I mean, it's clearly out because I found it today, uh, but I was shocked. I actually like did a double take. I was looking at this big table of books and I looked over and I was like, there's no way I just saw that. And then I turned 
And there it was. That book is Hook, Line, and Sinker. This is the second book after It Happened One Summer. Are you seeing that? Do you recognize that cover? Um, by Tessa Bailey. So I read It Happened One Summer last summer, and um, I enjoyed it. The steam was great. And I loved that it took place like in this cool little fishing village. It was very cool. Didn't love the main girl. I think you she grows on you in the end, but like I just I felt like I couldn't really connect with her, especially for like the first third of the book. But this book is about her younger sister and about another fisherman in this town. And you get a glimpse of their tension at the end of the first book. And I was intrigued. I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, can we wrap this one up so I can get to the second one, please? Um, and so I've been waiting maybe five long months for this one to come out. And it's finally here. I've been trying to really read a lot of my romances as ebooks these days, but because I already own the first one, I was like, might as well get the second one. And I really like this teal. So anyway, um, I'm excited to read this one. I wish I could get it done by the end of February. I don't think it's possible. It was a pleasant surprise seeing that it was out earlier than I expected. Again, did a double take. I was like, what now? What now? It was like one of the tables near the cash register. So I was like ready to go. And then I spotted it. I was like, yes get in the basket, we're going home. So anyway, those are all of the books that I picked up for my beautiful little birthday book haul. Um, birthday book bitch, the three Bs. <laughs> That's the end of this video, my friends. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.